Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this Q&A session with Piers Torday, the author of the brilliant book, There May Be a Castle, soon to be adapted for stage here at Little Angel Theatre. Hi, George. Um, it's great to be with you. Um, my inspiration for writing There May Be a Castle comes from, I suppose, three places, really. Um, one is that uh, it was a, quite a sad time in my life, uh, as well as a Christmassy time. And I was trying to make sense of all that. And I uh, talked to uh, a friend of mine who is uh, a psychotherapist looking, working with children. She told me an amazing story about someone she'd worked with a very long time ago, uh, who'd been in a very difficult spot and this child had come to her and been so unhappy that they couldn't really express what was making them so sad. And uh, my friend talked to them and said, well, look, I understand. Perhaps could you visualize your feelings as a place? Would that help? And so the child said, I feel I'm in a very lonely, dark cave with no way out. And they kept on talking, kept on talking. And I'm delighted to say that after many months that child felt much, much better and happier about what was going on in their life. And my friend said, well, look, I think we can probably finish these sessions now, don't you? And the child said, yes. And my friend said, but before you go, can I just ask you, do you remember when we started talking all those months ago and I asked you to imagine your feelings as a place? Do you think you could do it again just before you leave? And the child said, well, I'm still in the cave but I'm standing at the mouth of the cave and I'm looking out. And my friend said, and what can you see? And the child said, I'm not sure, but there may be a castle. And I thought that was so lovely because I hope that for anyone, no matter if they ever feel themselves in a dark cave, that they can always see a castle on the top of a hill um, in the distance and something bigger and brighter to believe in. And I, just love that as a title, There May Be a Castle. And around the same time, I read an incredible story about a little boy in America, a real, this is a real story, um, who was driving with his mum in the snow uh, in a very wintry place like Dakota, North Dakota, somewhere like that. And there's a terrible accident. And without having too much away about the story that you're gonna watch in this show or read this in this book, this little boy was able to climb out of the wreckage and do something amazing for his mum. So that, that sort of true life title and true life stories were the inspiration for really what I wanted to be was a wonderful Christmas adventure. Yeah, I think those two stories are really remarkable. And I think anyone who has experienced grief that will really resonate with them about, you know, your grief moving forward with you and you do end up being at different points along the way in your own journey um, and yeah. so that actually follows quite nicely on to the next question so lots of things um but you're absolutely right i i wrote it from a place of grief and it's exploring that but it's not just for anyone grieving it's also a book for anyone who's having a difficult time in their life and um, it's about the power of the imagination. It's to show children that the world, no matter what their circumstances, that certainly I believe that the world is theirs to make and that the power of stories, that they allow you to visualise different and better futures, not just for yourself, but for the people you love and the people around you. And that the inspiration that, imaginative visions, stories, quests, adventures can offer you, can be so powerful that they can sometimes enable people to do what feel like impossible superhuman things. And so that although um, elements of the story are sad, I believe it's also a really hopeful book um, because it's about what even very small people, young people, children, can achieve in a very short space of time. And it's also got lots of jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've read the book and it, it's full of so much adventure and so much, so much 
fantastic little quirks, I think, in, in the midst of all of that um, narrative as well. So I, I totally agree. It's unbelievably exciting because I've never had, I've written lots of books, but I've never had one adapted into a stage show before. Um, I myself have adapted books for the stage, so I know some of the process. Um, I love the Little Angel Theatre and I've seen many brilliant things there, so I can't wait. And it, it's kind of particularly resonates with this book because the story, which is about this little boy called Mouse, who's in a car, with his sister Violet and Esme, his two sisters and his mum at Christmas. And they're driving along a, a road they know very well and something terrible happens and they have to find their way through it using, I suppose, guided by some of the stories and story characters that they love. And so in a way it really lends itself to a theatrical ad adaptation particularly some of the amazing puppetry. It's very colorful, it's very visual, and it's great bringing those things to life on the page, the different imagined, there are imagined monsters and imagined creatures, and there are wizards and knights on horseback, talking horses. It's great to read those in a book, but I won't pretend to you that it's not even more exciting to see them for real right in front of you on stage. Uh, so I'm really excited about seeing characters who've only existed either in my head or in readers' heads coming to life because, you know, I saw, I've, I've seen a bit of the show in rehearsals and it's fantastic because when someone adapts your book, they tell your own story back to you and then you learn new things about it. So I think that's at heart what I'm most excited about. Fantastic. I've also been in the rehearsal room and the puppet, seeing the puppets come to life and the actors and the puppeteers who are bringing those um, characters to life is yeah. just such a transformation from hearing the read through and reading the book and then kind yeah. of going from page to stage in a way. Um, and I also think what's good about it being done at this particular moment is throughout the past 18 months, you know, we've all been through a whirlwind and we have felt like we need to do those superhuman um, tasks at times and I think this will really resonate with younger audiences and also our older audiences alike in the sense that you know look at how far we've come and um, we can do it together. Um, absolutely and it's you know we've a lot of us have been uh, stuck at home and you know isolated for one reason or another and you're completely right, This because this story is also about the amazing journeys you can take in your head, even, even when you're stuck inside. But I hope people are going to take the journey actual, to the actual theatre and experience it live, because it's from what I've seen so far, it's definitely not to be missed. 